Hello, my name is Nicholas Biddle. Allow me to offer you a short history of the National Bank. The first National Bank was chartered on February 25, 1791 by Alexander Hamilton as part of his fiscal program. However, during the events leading up to the War of 1812, Americans did not recharter the bank because there are more important problems with Britain to deal with. After the War of 1812, it was widely agreed upon that a new national bank was important for economic growth, and the second national bank was chartered as part of Henry Clay's American system. The bank wasn't a complete success. It actually contributed to the Panic of 1819. But by 1829, under the leadership of me, Nicholas Biddle, the bank came to be known as one of the necessities of the American economy. Within the first three years of the National Bank being created, it had a massive amount of federal funds that it then loaned out to people who didn't show proper security, they didn't give any evidence that they could actually pay the loans back, or they gave out money that couldn't be backed by hard currency. In 1819, the economic bubble popped and over-speculation ran rampant. Jackson hated the banks because of this. And while it's understandable, we did cause a massive problem in 1819. I believe his hate is unwarranted. This happened under the leadership of a different bank president. However, I, Nicholas Biddle, would never let something like that happen again. At least, not at the fault of my bank. Jackson, on the other hand, is a different story. Jackson actually hates the bank so much that he vetoed the recharter for the second national bank. What? And I heard that it was during his presidential election. I mean, like, what a risky move. Yeah, I know. Actually, let me tell you something, okay? So in 1819, Jackson was some poor old farmer, right? And he put all his money in the bank. But the thing is, he lost it all. So now he's just taking his hate out on the second national bank and ruining the entire country. I mean, like, my husband, he's a textile company owner, right? And he might lose everything all because of Jackson. That dirty old farmer knows nothing about running our country. I mean, like, what do you expect from a guy that was born on a walk out? <laughs> he wants us to walk around with shiny old rocks in our pockets. What a dirty old My name is Henry Clay, and the Second National Bank is essential to interstate commerce and taxation. Let us say that the states were responsible for printing currency, and that Massachusetts printed a large amount of money, while Pennsylvania printed next to none. As a result, the Pennsylvania dollar would be worth more. How would the merchants between those two states charge each other? What would happen? is also the issue of taxation. Since Congress has a national tax rate, all of the states would pay the same amount of money, and because every state has a different value for their dollar, one state would end up paying more money. So Jackson wants to take down the bank. He's going to take out the $10 million in the National Bank to do it. First, he goes to his Secretary of Treasury and asks him to take out the money, but he says no. Taking the money out. So Jackson goes to Congress. When he's there, he gets a two-to-one vote that he can't remove the deposits. Seeing that this failed, he goes to his original Secretary of State, fires that Secretary, and gets a new one, and asks them to take all the money out so he can give it to state banks and pet banks. You're fired. Why? Go. Can you take the money out? Well, okay. So now we got all these banks, they're stuffed full of federal funds, and don't have any central institution keeping them under control. All thanks to Jackson, by the way. These banks decide to loan out money like it grows on trees, which fueled a huge speculation boom for Western lands. Jackson then tells the Secretary of Treasury to issue the Species Circular, which requires all lands in the West to be purchased only by gold and silver. This raises inflation even more, and puts a ton of hatred that should have gone to Jackson on to Martin Van Buren. The next problem. It could be argued that Jackson single-handedly caused an economic depression. It takes skill to ruin the U.S. economy that bad. So you're asking me if we should put Andrew Jackson, the man who tried to kill the bank and doesn't even like paper money, on the $20 bill? I think not. This message has been approved by Nicholas Biddle.
Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs>